Hey, kids, sit up and pay attention. It's time for retro horrific Credit Crunch Edition. Yeah, no, uh, <coughs> he hasn't brought his stuff down yet from Foreign Place. I will be moving into my new house on the 15th, and then we will have the equipment to do these videos properly. But for now, we're settling with this. We're giving you your fix, you bastard. <laughs> So, uh, we get to what we're reviewing. What big geeky film just came out? It's District 9! Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, we can't even afford, like, shitty sound effects. So what um, did you think of the film, James? Um, there's a reason that I keep on going about the budget. Budget, as most of you probably know, 30 mil for District 9. I thought that it puts to shame any blockbuster I've seen over the last few years in terms of action, storyline, plot, characterization. Um, Not to mention originality. Originality, dubious, because it is. It's been done before. Um, it's just been done it, more interesting in this case. Right? Perhaps it's been done before, but the, there's so much originality involved. I mean, the... The, the way it's shot and the, the aliens themselves and that whole sort of yeah. aspect of their society clashing with human society and all those things. I love all that, those that we things, didn't see too much of their society in it. Mm. But all those yeah. things are ideas that have been done before but have never been done with this much freshness, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. I love the fact that this is basically <clears throat> a beautiful, seriously done, straight-faced, but not I'm willing to take the piss out of itself, B movie. Mm. Um, I mean, it, this is a film with everything. You have a romantic subplot. You, um, it's Christopher and uh, the moustache guy. He's the, not Christopher. No, the other guy. The alien. Oh, guy. Christopher oh. and the alien. Right, yeah. sorry. No, the moustache guy. The moustache guy is not the alien. Well, yeah. Yeah, this is why we wish we could edit. Wait, um, wait, 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 let's start this again. Explain to me who is in love with who in this film. It was a joke about Christopher the Prawn yes. being in love with this guy with the moustache. Ah! But I was actually talking about the wife and the guy with the moustache. I, I, his name escaped me, I'm sorry. I think I killed that joke, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, I, it wasn't a particularly good joke in the first place, and you read it. Anyway, um, it had exploding heads, flying pigs, mechas. Mechas. Fucking mechas. Any film with mechas is going to be that much better, let's face it. Um, exploding heads. Exploding heads. There's exploding did, heads. Did we mention the exploding heads? I, I don't think we did enough. Um, um, alien voodoo. autopsies. Voodoo. In voodoo. Exploding heads. <laughs> um, there's just so much awesome in this film. Um, and the fact is, it. I just love the way it starts off as a documentary. Turns into action B-movie film for mm -hmm. a bit and turns back into a documentary to set up a sequel. It, it's just done so perfectly. See, there's my first gripe with this film. You knew it was coming, ladies and gentlemen. A um, little bit too geared towards a sequel. I like that it has an ambiguous ending, um, but I feel like they spent ten minutes at the end of the film going, well, we wonder if he'll ever return. And we wait, wonder what wait, will happen no, to this no. character. And we wonder what will happen to this character. And you think, well, you know, the audience could have just asked themselves those questions, really. Yeah. They didn't need to overstate it quite so much. At the end of the day, the amount of money is made, it's going to get a sequel. I'm sure it is. And I will definitely watch the sequel, and I will look forward to the sequel. I just feel like this film would have worked be better with, a, with an ambiguous ending, but without stressing the fact that there obviously will be a sequel quite so much. Yeah. Um, I think there's mm -hmm. one point where this film turns serious, mm -hmm. um, and that's when you, you're kind of thinking, like, you see the aliens, you're like, yeah, they're, they're, they're aliens, okay, cool, it's good CGI, you don't have an issue with it. The moment you start empathising with them mm -hmm. is the, how do you like your first abortion line? Would you like a souvenir? Oh, that wow. shocks me. Yeah, because it's pretty horrific. Yeah, you know, it, it's just, you know, it's, you're just thinking, like, shit, man, shit. I, I didn't know that could happen in a film about CGI prawns. Yeah. Yeah. It's also nice to see, thinking about it now, it's nice to see a film where the aliens are not evil invaders and the humans are not yeah. um, stupid bastards who brought it on themselves. In this film, both sides are to blame, really. Yeah. You know, no 
nobody's blameless in this. And I like that. You know, yeah. It's not just good guys versus bad guys. Yeah. It, it's... I'm kind of wondering how much they how much they're playing on allegory, um, because you, you know, it's it said in South Africa you can't not ask a question like not ask the question of is this allegory or has he come up with an original story and it's just a bit more hard hitting that it's in. See, from the interviews that I have read, I would say that it's probably not intended to be allegory. It's just that he, the director, who is also the writer, grew up in that environment yeah. and so of course that has been a heavy influence in the story so yes um there is a definite influence of apartheid on the story but i don't yeah. think it's necessarily intended as an allegory yeah i mean it, it's it's a very hard for hitting and shocking story because Absolutely. you kind of you kind of have to you know get past that initial shock when it turns into like action movie mode there's, there's something that feels a bit forced about it switching that way yeah, you kind of take it. Yeah, it, it's done very well. It's done very tastefully. But, you you know, you're still not over it. I, just, I love that that's what stays with you about this film. It's not the action scenes. No. It's the hard-hitting, you know, it's character ostracised by his world and having to flee to the place where he least wants to be, mm-hmm. where the place where the world, what the world least wants to exist. Yeah. Yeah, and I love that we got a taste of people who are protesting on behalf of the forms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually feel rude saying that word. <laughs> I feel like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm being racist by saying that word. For a film to have that kind of profound effect, mm. it's definitely it's worth a very good film. Very good film. Highly recommend it. Interestingly, an observation that I made um, while I was watching the film, I was thinking this. It's just interesting that this film came out of sort of the ruins of the Halo film adaptation. Yeah, because. The whole way through it, especially towards the last half of the film, I kept thinking, wow, this would make a really good game. Yeah. Because you could imagine being taken into that world. And especially the last section of the film where basically the main character through, let's not give too much away, but basically discovers his newfound superpowers, as it were. Yeah. as he's discovering what he can do, you just think, wow, these would all make great levels of the game. Yeah, you know? definitely. Uh, I, I, personally, it's made, I'm not a particular gamer kind of guy, um, but it makes me really wonder what we were in store for with Halo. Yeah. I really hope that project gets that, that buried, unburied. And Neil Blomkamp is undisputedly a, a director to contend with. And yeah. I would have been very intrigued to see what he had done with Halo. Firstly, I'm very excited to see what now the studios are going to be. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of hoping he stays slightly independent, but he's not. He's going to get bought out with a very big paycheck, and you know, just yeah, he's fair dues to him. He because, deserves that paycheck. Because at the end of the day, what this film has done, which I think is deserves more noteworthy attention than the film itself, is he's made an independent film gross massively at the box office. And it kind of brings out the independent films. This is the biggest thing that the independent scene needs. Yeah, this is what the independent scene needed. This means that we're going to see new original films, not just sequels, not just franchises that have been established for 20, 30 years. Yeah. We're going to see some genuinely original films come out over I the next couple of years. So. Um, and, you know, I, I think this film will be remembered more for that than its quality, which, you know, speaks for itself. So I think we should be very excited about what we have to review over the next coming years. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be reviewing for the next couple of years. Yeah. Unless I completely disregard you and <laughs> your corpse. <laughs> right. I think um, we need to be careful not to overrun here. So should we just uh, exactly. give our closing statement? Um, Great film. Yeah. Go see it. Mm-hmm. Support the independent film trade for watching this film yeah. as well as having a heartily good time. Yeah. You will buy the DVD, you know you will if you're I, watching that. I certainly will. Um, I have just a few gripes, uh, which are too much of the sort of sequel baiting at the end. Uh, oh, we use a steady cam, but whatever, I'm getting used to that in the film industry yeah. now. And at least it was used to better effect in this film than yeah. it is in most films. The steady cam feels like it should be there, even if it's used a little bit too much. Those are my only two gripes. I absolutely enjoyed this film, it was brilliant. Go yeah. see it. Yeah. Um, we will be seeing you with 
proper rhetoric rather than bite-sized rhetoric light um, soon, so you're going to have to give me yeah. what I do. And our Matrix review is still on the way. Keep, keep watching for that. You will know when it happens. <laughs>